Hi, I'm Nikki, the Obsessive Bookseller. Welcome to my wrap-up for January 2023. I really hit the ground running this month. So many titles. And granted, I cheated a little bit. Some of these were read in late December because they're for projects that didn't go live until mid-January. But for the most part, my page consumption has been up. I've been really enjoying reading this month. So what have I been reading? I read The Smoke Thief by Shanna Abe. It's book one in the Dracon series. I read this for my A to Z challenge, which I'll link the playlist in the description. It's a new thing I've got running. I was thinking this book was going to be more fantasy than romance. I knew it was a combination of the two, but it definitely leaned more romance. And on top of that, it wasn't a very good romance. There was nothing compelling about the relationship. There was no reason why I thought the woman should choose the man. And across the board, it was a major letdown. So this is definitely my worst read of the month. It might even make it as my worst read of the year, but we shall see. It's a little early. For Patreon Book Club, we read We Ride the Storm by Devin Madsen. It's the first book in the Reborn Empire series. I had no idea what to expect before going into this one. I was predicting it would give, be like a Grey Bastards type of vibe because of the image on the cover. Not the case. Very different from that. Kind of more of a politically driven story. But see, here's the thing. There were politics going on. It went through them all incredibly quickly. The pacing was just snappy, but it didn't really have a lot of depth. So on one hand, it was a fast read. It was very engaging. But on the other hand, I, I lacked more than just kind of surface level stuff. I don't feel like the author took the time to really ground you in the motives behind the characters. And so later in the book, when things started happening and they started having all these convictions, it felt a little bit thin but really interesting profiles and very unconventionally told. I do remember hearing that this one was a self-pub before it was a trad pub. I do appreciate the self-published market because they have a tendency to try new things and not really stick to the conventions of storytelling that traditional publisher publishers look for. They look for a certain type of story arc. So there were a lot of things in here that really surprised me. From like the third or fourth chapter, I thought I'd had it all figured out. I'm like, all right, this is what's going to happen here. This is what's going to happen with this character. And those expectations were completely like shoved under the rug. They, they didn't happen. <laughs> so I enjoyed the unconventionality. I thought things were a little thin, could have used a little more character development, but overall was a really interesting story. And I plan on reading on. So I'm landing at probably like a three out of five star. Decent read. Can't wait to see what's next. There's a couple of things that... The author is promising some good reveals on, so I'm on board for that. For Read Burn Horde, I read with my patrons The Bone Doll Twin by Lynn Flewelling. The author herself describes this type of story as gothic fantasy, and it, you know, that's kind of the vibe I got from it. I don't know that I've read any other gothic fantasy, but it definitely had this like moody, dark undertone. I would recommend not reading this book if you've just had a baby because it's like there's a couple of things at the very beginning that's a bit rough to read. But overall, it was an interesting story. I did like the atmosphere it created. I thought the characters were an interesting profile and just like it was just weird. There's also some weird magics in it that I'm not totally sold on, but I'm sure they'll be explained as things go along. But essentially, there's this female character born with a twin. They killed the twin and then changed her magically into a boy. It has something to do with the politics and the lineage and girls don't make it to inherit. They always get killed by those who are more ambitious or whatever. And the fact that I can't explain to you exactly like what it's about with any sort of sense of conviction or clarity means that I didn't really pick up that much. It was just kind of the essence of what was going on. So, okay, this girl thinks she's a boy. And there was a lot of room in there for some exploration of gender identity, but the author didn't really touch on that at all. So perhaps a missed opportunity. But I think my favorite thing about the book was the relationships between all of the characters. I thought the dynamics were interesting. There was a lot of like really almost profound mental health explorations, some things that gave me a lot of food for thought. And actually, my patrons and I had quite the conversation on a bunch of things about this book. It was just, it, it is not one that you're going to read and have no thoughts about at all. I did find I really liked the flowing style of the author's writing. Very easy, very consumable type of writing. And I am interested in continuing on in this series. It's a set of three, and then... One of my patrons figured out that there's another set that continues after that. So depending on how things go with this one, I might be diving into that one after this. But 
So I'm, I'm landing at another like three out of five star, but also hopeful to see where it goes in the future. Read Burn Horde is great because it makes me pick up things that I would not have probably picked up for a long time in any case. I was actually thinking of unhauling this one, but I was mentioning the shelf that I was working on for my patrons and a couple of them said, oh, we've been meaning to read that one. So hence it jumped up in the priority list and became a read. Yeah, not my usual, but I'm kind of glad I dipped my toes into it. Jade War by Fonda Lee. Coming in at a 3.5 out of 5 star. I think the first one was a 3 out of 5. I might round it up to four. It was an entertaining read. Really not a lot changed from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. It was kind of just status quo the whole time. We have some inter-house politics and interesting character dynamics. Uh, I don't know. I want to like this one a little more than I am. So many people love this book. Even when I just mention reading it, I get a couple of comments of people who are just, oh, they love this series. And I feel bad that I don't like it quite as much. I mean, it's enjoyable. I, I don't think I would have anything negative to say about it had it not been hyped up so much. I think I would be like, yeah, this is a decent read, you know, middle of the road. I've read better, but it's still fun. And I'm really looking forward to the third book because I think I've mentioned this, but I didn't really start hearing a lot of hype for this until the third book came out. So I'm, I'm hoping it'll end with a bang. This author has shown me in Untethered Sky that she can really go somewhere meaningful with her stories so I'm hoping that'll be the case but as for this one so I have read a series very similar to this one and it's Heart Strikers by Rachel Aaron that one has all the same dynamics only it also has dragon shifters so I liked it more <laughs> I do like the characters in here though a lot of the discussion my patrons and I had about it were on character merit and what we thought they would do next and kind of like a deep analysis of their personalities and I've got a few running theories on what's going to happen in the third book but we shall see. So yes I'm not sad that I'm reading these I'm enjoying them mostly but I don't think I'm enjoying them as much as others led me to believe I would. I picked up and then put down Shogun by James Clavell and in the book's defense it wasn't totally the book's fault that I put it down I just, I picked it up before I really wanted to or was ready to read it. It's one that I've had on my radar for a long time, and there was this massive buddy read going on for it with some people that I really like. So I thought, I really want to be involved. I want to participate. And I picked it up, and I was committed to just listening to, like, a chapter or two a day, whatever. And it's one of those that I know that if I kept reading, it would go somewhere profound. But it's a 1,200-page book, and of the, like, 120 pages that I read... There was a lot more like sexual content than anything else like that's what the story felt like it was about if i had no idea where it was going or anything about the story i would have thought i was reading kind of a weird romance novel like a historical timepiece romance novel and i also questioned the historical accurateness of some of the stuff that was happening in there but it had a really good voice uh, i did the audiobook and it's narrated by the same guy that did the malazan series i believe and it was decent. I liked the character banter and dynamics. Uh, the fish out of water theme was really fun. But yeah, I just, I was like, this, I wasn't in the mood to do it right now. But I have to thank this book. Because I was picking it up, doing it a chapter a day, it's what gave me the idea to do my A to Z challenge. And I am loving that project right now. I'm planning on running it for the entire year. But I didn't have time to commit to a couple chapters a day from Shogun and a couple chapters a day for that project. So priorities. That was a really long-winded way of saying that you might probably still like the book even though I DNF'd it. I didn't DNF it because it was a bad book. But speaking of Project A to Z, I am also reading Half a King by Joe Abercrombie. By the time this video goes live, I'll probably have finished this one, but I am enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, it got a lot of flack, I think because people read it expecting really gritty Joe Abercrombie. No, this is Joe Abercrombie, like, watering it down to tell his kids a story. That's what I picture. I don't know if he has kids, but if he did, this would be a perfect tale to tell them like as a bedtime story. And I'm finding the sense of adventure. I love the camaraderie. I'm, I love the characters. They're funny. You know, he's always infusing that situational humor and that offhand sardonic comment that really just like tickles you. All of that stuff is present. He has a really evoking way of describing settings and emotion. All of that is present here. It's just, it's not gritty. And it's kind of a slowly paced, 
adventure, if you will, but maybe kind of a revenge story as well. I'm really enjoying it. Compared to the middle grade and young adult I have been reading lately, it is definitely superior. So I don't know that I would shelve it with those, but it definitely doesn't belong with your like really grim, dark adult fantasy stuff either. I like it. I read Sweep of the Heart by Alona Andrews. It's book five or six in the Innkeeper series. It's been a really long time since I read the previous one. And so I've forgotten a lot of the side characters in the story. As I was reading, the memory of what they did and their significance kind of came back to me. But I spent a good first 50% of the book feeling like just on this side of Lost. But the story was fun enough that I really enjoyed it. This was initially a web serial and they write on it for a year or two and then consolidate everything they've written into a book. And so it was very episodic, but it was really fun. Uh, there's this major event taking place at this inn where all sorts of different alien species are coming and the inn is the crossroads between other places so it's kind of like a hub where they can all go to then travel to other places there was a lot of politics going on with it a mystery element involved just a tad little bit of a romance but not like one that was evident on the pages it was kind of like the periphery character it was so much fun and there was a competition element too and so I found myself near the end of the book really into it figuring like who's gonna win? I love it. So I continue to love these authors. This was a fun jaunt. I think because it had been so long since I had read the other ones it suffered a little bit but had I read them all back to back this probably would have been one of my favorites. So I'm coming in at a four out of five star. The timing of it makes me think it could have been a five out of five star but whatever. It is what it is. I liked it not so much liked it for project urban fantasy i read two this month one was magic to the bone by devon monk i had read this one before and i remember liking it but it was before i'd really gotten into urban fantasy and seen what what they had to offer i'd only read a couple of paranormal romance up to that point now compared to your typical paranormal romance it was on par it was okay compared to the robust urban fantasies that i've been reading like ugh, it was one of the worst ones i've read it was awful this character was such an idiot. Like, there was no... She's supposedly a Harvard dropout, I guess, but she was at least in Harvard. But she didn't have an iota of common sense or forethought, and we're supposed to believe she's an intelligent character, but she has stupid decisions. I thought everything was stupid. <laughs> the love story wasn't very good. I wasn't convinced. Uh, the mystery wasn't very compelling. And the magic system was kind of weak. It, like, I, I didn't like anything about this book. I think I'm going to rate it a one star. Did not like it. Maybe a 1.5. Did not like it, but I could see others maybe liking it with a little bit of merit. Because if you're into paranormal romance, you will like this one. And believe you me, there is a definite difference between paranormal romance and urban fantasy. And this one very much swings that way. <laughs> and a little bit more successful, Artificial Night by Sheena and McGuire. Um, this, th I love the author's Wayward Children series. She won me over. I know she can write something really profound. Those works were a lot, written a lot later than an October Day. So I'm giving her like the benefit of the doubt that she could grow in into something amazing. And she is currently, I believe, like, at least within the last two or three years, still writing in this series. So I do know it's going somewhere. I, I just, I'm not sold yet. A lot of people really liked book three. That's where it started really taking off for them. And... It was just okay. I really like the world building. I like the atmosphere. The, what I am missing is a deep connection to the character. When things really profound happen to her, the author doesn't slow it down and take a moment to bask in that. She just kind of moves things along, which means you feel like the character doesn't really care about anything. And so therefore, I don't care anything about what's going on as a reader. So once she can figure out a way to get that connection, then I think I'll be on board. Because if nothing else... I love Sheena Ann McGuire for her very creative world building. You will not find anything quite like the vibe and atmosphere that she creates. So if you like urban fantasy, but you want something with like just a different feel, totally different than what's usual in the genre, give her a try. She's pretty cool. I'm very proud of myself for this one. I don't have to quit booktubing. I finally picked up Ruin by John Gwynn and I'm a good ways into it and I'm, I'm loving it. This is one of those books where you pick it up and you are okay taking as much time as you need with it because every page, every moment is totally absorbing, really interesting. You really feel for all of these characters and you just don't want it to end. 
The only other series that I feel that way about, well, there's a couple, but I really love that about Sanderson's Stormlight Archive series and Robin Hobb and Lycanius. I, I mean, I can see why this series is so beloved across the board. So many interesting things happening. Um, I had to read the first two books physically because there were so many characters, and I'm one of those people that if I lose track of who anybody is, I immediately lose investment in the story and I don't care anymore. So I wanted to make sure I did it right. Like, we're, we don't have time to reread and absorb everything. I want to get it the first time. That's why it's taking me so long to get through Malazan. But I very carefully, like, solidified in my brain who all these people were. So I was able to pick this one up on audio. And I'm there's only one character who I really, I, I remember him, but I don't remember exactly how we got to this point. But that's okay. One out of, like, a couple dozen that we're following, I'll take it. This one follows suit with the first couple of books. It's one of those series where you don't feel like you're reading individual books. You are you feel like you're reading one entire story split up into four parts because it picks up right where the other one left off. There's no change in tone as with some series where it, you can tell it's like a second book or a third book. No, that's not the case here. It's all one big large story. And for that reason, I'd recommend reading these like more back to back than maybe you would have otherwise because we're really building momentum here. I love the character dynamics and the thought that goes into each of their actions and some of the changes that they've had within them in this story alone. And it's really visceral and brutal. Awesome. I finished Blade of Dream by Daniel Abraham. I love this series. I love it so much. And like from an objective standpoint, I'm going to tell you, if you didn't like the first book, you will not like the second book. It is more of the same, but all of the same stuff that I loved about it. This like deep, rich enmeshing into the characters and everything is just so realistic and you feel like you're reading real people's accounts of things. And there's this overall weaving structure of the story where each book is told along the same timeline. So the first book happened and now this one starts over and tells it from a different perspective, but the same events. And normally, I always preach that if I know anything about what's going to happen in a book, I'm not interested, I'm totally disengaged. In this case, because it's by design and we're getting so much more information leading up to those single events that I know about, and such a deep character immersion, I just, oh, I love every single page. I found myself sneaking passages here and there just whenever I had a free moment just because I wanted to see what happens next. And it's very much a character study. The first book had a lot more overall implications and moving parts. This is very much more about just two characters and then it kind of adds in a couple of side characters that we didn't see in the first book and by the way they're some of my favorites from the entire series. There's this one, this POV's father, who has one of the most interesting profiles I've seen in any book in a really long time. Like it's so cool and I really love the brother. Oh I'm just saying. Like, I don't gush about books very often but I'm gushing about this one. I absolutely loved it but it's also one that I know like, you already have to really be into the story and the type of writing that Abraham brings. And you have to be okay with that slow burn and that incredible character focus. And you've got to be into what the characters are doing. If, if any one of those things doesn't line up, you probably won't enjoy this book. But I just, we're building towards something so cool and I cannot wait. There's going to be so much expectation on that third book, but I can't wait. As soon as I have the chance, I will get my hands on that and see how it ends. Because this is just... Yeah, one of my favorite reads in a really long time. I love Abraham, and he continues to be one of my favorites for a reason. And to come off that high a little bit, in December I read a book that I forgot to mention because it was just kind of mediocre, but I read How to Change by Katie Milkman, and I feel like if you've watched her TED Talk, you've basically gained everything that I got out of the book. She has some really good points. There's some theory about when to start new habits and why certain habits stick and others don't based on the timing of things, based on the narrative you tell yourself. So I found, found it a really interesting psychological thing. I think if you're going to read the whole book, you're better off reading How to Change by Duhigg or Atomic Habits by Clear and then watch her TED Talk. I did appreciate the science behind it. She did a lot of research, I believe, with Harvard and a lot of the case studies that they did, experiments, those were really interesting to read about, so a lot of fun. But yeah, I forgot to mention it just because it was like, meh, cool.
that's the lineup for the month. I did read most of what I intended to and enjoyed most of it. I am carrying Ruin over into next month, but pretty much nothing else. I've got a clean slate going into it, so we'll see what kind of mischief I can get up to in February. I want to know what were your favorite reads of the month? Anything good? Thanks so much for stopping by, and I hope to catch you next time. Bye.